Land Wars in Asia. Am I right? Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, welcome back to Politically Correct Books. So, uh, for those of you who are here just solely for the comic stuff, uh, you can go ahead and tune out on this one, but I recommend that you stay, because uh, you're probably really going to enjoy this. So I'm uh, going through Karnow's Vietnam A History. So this was one of my sister's textbooks when she went to college. Uh, I sort of uh, stole it off her bookshelf, and uh, now I'm reading it. I'm about halfway through it. So the reason I'm going to do a part one here um, of this book is because, I, you know, I've gotten to the point where American involvement sort of steps up to a whole nother level. So I'm at the uh, Gulf of Tonkin incident, and uh, the first part of the book has been so amazing. I'm, I originally came to this book specifically to read about the American involvement in the war and things that I'm more familiar with, but the first half of the book is so enjoyable, I think that I would uh, split this into two parts and talk about the first half of the book. So, uh, in the very beginning, the book, of course, goes back to Vietnam's ancient history and works its way down. I thought initially, after about a page and a half of that, I was going to uh, skip that, but I didn't. Uh, as I read on, I just found it interesting, which speaks to the author. Uh, it was something I didn't have uh, an interest in at all, and I ended up reading the entire thing. This book is very long, so it does have a um, note section and an index section, and uh, yeah, it's it's really long. I mean, it's well over 600 pages. I'm on page uh, 386, uh, and the first part uh, that fills me in, uh, you know, Vietnam's ancient history and the slow burn on French imperialism in the region. So, you know, the, the uh, Vietnam region had always kind of had a imperialistic and antagonistic relationship with China, who saw it as a tributary state and occasionally wanted to colonize it. I'm going to turn this off for glare. And, uh, you know, kind of worked its way in, worked its way out. They had to pay tribute to the Chinese, but then the, Ch the French show up, and French imperialism really has a slow burn in the Vietnam region. Um, that was really, really interesting. I kind of didn't expect that. So it dates back to, I believe the 1780s is kind of when it, it, it sort of first gets rolling, but it doesn't get formalized until later. Uh, you have missionaries, but you have, uh, you know, first comes trade, then comes the uh, colonists, then comes a little more formal imperialism. I'm trying to check out some of these better pictures here. We've got, uh, you know, pictures of... Uh, you know, drawings and stuff like that. All in all, I really enjoy these at the beginning of the chapter. These older ones, you know, tend to be, uh... There you go, there's some better ones. It's a pretty cool, uh, colonial place there. Talk about them, you know, impractical, uh, military uniforms you got there. As time goes on, though, uh, the author details, uh, Ho Chi Minh and his relationship with his home nation, but also with the French imperialists. Ho Chi Minh had a very interesting life before he became uh, sort of the unofficial leader of North Vietnam. He might, honestly, I don't know, he might be the official leader of Vietnam uh, before he dies, but uh, in here in 1964, he's kind of the un unofficial leader of Vietnam. Uh, very interesting life. Traveled around the world, lived in France uh, quite a few times, gone here, there. At one point, he's in the Soviet Union. Uh, at least one point, but I believe more than once, people believed him to be dead, and he just sort of, like, shows up out of the shadows. Just fascinating, fascinating life. And uh, some of his axioms that he says and quotes that he says that he's uh, that are at least attributed to him in this book are really, really amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah, just interesting guy. I'd like to read a biography on Ho Chi Minh. Um, I might do that at some point, or at least put it on my Goodreads list of books that I need to read. I uh, don't probably have time in the near future, but I'll hopefully get to it. Oh, uh, something else that's really, really cool is post-World War II, that sort of stretch between uh, World, the end of World War II in 1945 and Dien Bien Phu, uh, which is sort of like the big final battle between the French and the Vietnam, or the Viet Minh, uh, that's you know nearly 10 years and from the perspective of an american uh when i went through history class it was very much post-world war ii 
what we think of as American history. There's the five-year stretch between World War II and the Korean War, and that five-year stretch is normally uh, thrown out with some buzzwords like, you know, the start of the baby boom and suburbanization and the post-war economic boom and that kind of stuff and, you know, changing American uh, lives as the as the GIs return. But here, you know, it's very much... Um, yeah, there's there's the Japanese, the end of the Japanese, and then the French try to return, and the French have problems uh, when they return to Vietnam, and the Vietnam men want to kick them out, and there's sort of like a back and forth. It, it, it gets really, really interesting. The book doesn't go into that in great detail, but um, in the lead up to Dien Bien Phu, um, you know, they're, both sides are about to come to the bargaining table, and they kind of know they're about to come to the bargaining table. And Dien Bien Phu, initially, uh, when the French are defeated at Dien Bien Phu, and they're about to go to the bargaining table uh, in Geneva, the Viet Minh and, you know, just Vietnam as a whole has a really strong position at the bargaining table, but... Um, the the Chinese are there, and you know the Chinese. This is sort of like China's first coming out on the world stage post 1949 founding of the PRC. And Joe Inlai is actually there, and there's a whole big section of the book where it details sort of the goings on at Gen Geneva and the um, sort of uh, background to the negotiations. And my gist of it, controversial statement, but I think the author would probably agree to me, is Joe Enlai really sells out the Vietnamese uh, when it comes to the bargaining table. And so all the bargaining strength that they got from the defeat of the French at Dien Bien Phu is kind of uh, squandered because of Vietnam's nominal ally in communism. Uh, after that, you have the Diem regime in Vietnam, which he's sort of like... The you know Vietnam is partitioned to the north and south, and in the south you have the Diem regime, and you know he is an interesting figure. You know he causes a lot of problems. There's a lot of division between uh, Buddhist militant Buddhists and the Catholic population. Diem being Catholic, and eventually Diem is ousted uh, in a coup d'état, and then after the coup d'état for Diem, there's a few other coup d'états. So again, I'm up sort of to the 1964 Gulf of Tonkin incident, and that's over halfway through the book. So this book has a lot of great background on sort of lesser known things about Vietnam. Now, Vietnam, and one of the reasons I love reading this book, Vietnam is one of the most often quoted things in American history. People say, that's such and such Vietnam, or it's just like Vietnam, or they reference details of Vietnam, or, you know... Hearts and minds, blah, 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 just like Vietnam. And uh, it's certainly one of the most quoted things in, in uh, American history and sort of one of the most referenced, you know, especially wars in the United States history. But it, it, judging from this book, like, people aren't as familiar with Vietnam as they like to think they are. I mean, even in my history class in high school when we went over Vietnam, um, you know, we, we talked about the DM coup and a lot of the history that I learned, not just about that coup, but about Vietnam in general, is just flat out wrong, at least if it's to be compared to what this book tells me. So, uh, you know, it, 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 I I, uh, I don't want to uh, dip my toes into the weight of uh, controversial subjects of, you know, how good the American public school system is, because I actually went to a really high related, highly rated public school, and, and, you know, the quality of my history was or the, the quality of my education was certainly above average in high school, but uh, I was taught a lot of wrong things about Vietnam that I think uh, was just a bunch of high school teachers sort of grinding their own political acts. So it's important to go out and read something like this. I forgot to Wikipedia the author, but the author um, was some kind of reporter in Vietnam for a long, long time, and he references that he speaks French fluently, and a lot of the uh, people in the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong side... He actually went and interviewed uh, on return trips to Vietnam after the war. So he talks about, like, I sat down with uh, Field Marshal Giap. I don't know if he's Field Marshal, but General Giap or whatever. And I talked to this person, I talked to that person in the 80s. Or I talked to them in the 90s, or I talked to them in, 
you know, the 70s, right after the war ended, and that's really, really cool. I think it adds a lot to this and adds a lot of layer. I should have wikipedia the guy. I'm sure he's really famous. Um, but this book is, uh, this book should be a textbook if it's not considered a textbook. But uh, as far as the narrative goes and just being an interesting read, it's amazing. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. And again, I'm a little over halfway through it, so I can't wait to do a follow-up review when I deal with more of the American uh, straight-up involvement in the war. Like, we're talking about the more famous stuff, like the Tet Offensive and... Uh, you know, everyone, everyone, of course, knows the picture of the helicopter evacuating people out of Saigon in the last days of uh, uh, the heavy American president presence in the war. So, uh, you know, are you interested in this book uh, or have you read this book? I think one of my uh, subscribers left a comment that they had read this book before because I sort of uh, alluded to it in one of the comments from my other videos of, of things that I was reading. So yeah, if you've read this book, uh, let me know. Let me know what you think about it. I, I'm just, uh, I'm bowled over by it. I really love it so far, and I haven't even gotten to the part that I originally picked it up for. It is a long read. I mean, you do have to have some interest in the Vietnam War when you're going into it, or otherwise it might get uh, really, really boring. Another thing, and the final thing that I love about this book so far is just the great quotes that come out of it, whether it's... Uh, you know, actual quotes from Ho Chi Minh, or it's just quotes by the writer of the book who gives his synopsis of things. Wow, just, I mean, you could, you could fill a much smaller book, uh, <laughs> albeit a much smaller book, you could fill one with uh, quotes from this thing, because it, it really is like, just some really amazing, powerful stuff. Yeah, so like, comment, subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know that a lot of people are here for the comic stuff, but hey, if you're, uh, if you're interested in, in books like this, definitely pick this up. This is, this is a must read in my opinion and I haven't even finished it yet.